In this video, we're gonna look at a particular problem of when you pan your camera around and the exposure changes in the scene. That can be going from a darker area to a brighter area and trying to balance out that light. And without shooting an auto, which I don't recommend you do, it can be difficult to get a nice looking image afterwards. So we're gonna use layer nodes again, and I already made a video on using layer nodes to protect your highlights. So you should go watch that one first and then come back to this one where we'll use a few more advanced techniques to really balance out the shadows and the lights in this clip. So with that said, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and have a look at it. All right, we are inside DaVinci Resolve in the color page and this is the clip that we're working with. It's going from this to this very bright light. So let's just identify the problem first. This will be our convert. I'll just use one of my LUTs to make this fast and then we're going to work with the exposure. So to convert it, I'm just going to use one of my LUTs here to convert it to Rexon 9 and then go into my LUT pack here the color pack and use Hollywood. I think that looks pretty good on this clip. Then we can hide this and we can jump straight into working with the exposure. Now, working with the exposure in this case, you can see if we go up here now, also in the waveform, it's way too bright. And while we do have some detail, here comes the problem. Let's say we wanted to balance the clip here first. Maybe we want to make it a little bit darker and maybe even brighten up the shadows just a little bit, but lower the highlights, something like this. Getting a little bit more moody from this to this. It looks pretty good. Now, if we move forward, it's still way too bright. What we could do here now is that we could limit it even further by dragging down the highlights, maybe dragging up the gain a little bit and trying to play around with the offset here. And we get a pretty decent result. I think I like how it looks now. It's still very bright, but that's just the way that it was when we shot it. And we could maybe even lower the lift a little bit to get some more detail in the shadow area. And this looks decent enough that it's workable but if we go back now our foreground all of a sudden looks very bad so this is the issue that we are trying to tackle today so i'm just gonna reset this exposure node and what i want to do first is i want to find kind of a middle area here i want to look at the waveform and see where it's starting to increase here and somewhere around here will probably be a good point just in the middle of getting very bright and still being a little bit dark in the foreground so what i want to do first is i want to lower my exposure a little bit to try and see if i can balance out just a little bit of my highlights here and a little bit of my shadows just to get a nicer image this could be a good starting point and this could probably work if we go forward this is too bright and this is a little bit too dark but it works if that's all we wanted to do now what i want to do and why i told you to watch the other video first is we're going to use layer notes and we did that in the other one a little bit more simple so in this one we're going to use two layer notes i'm going to name this one shadows and i'm going to name this one highlights the way layer notes work is that the bottom one is the top layer the second one is the middle layer now and this is the bottom layer so as you can see with these turned on we don't have any exposure adjustments anymore but if we turn these two off we are now back to our exposure adjustments as this is the bottom layer with the highlights still turned off i want to head into my shadows i want to turn this one on and then i want to go back to the beginning of my clip i want to make a mask i want to use the squared mask here and i'm going to drag it up and soften it out quite a bit going to click shift h to see what i'm doing just out of frame and then drag it all the way up now we have a selection here with the qualifier now i want to drag down the highlights to make sure i'm not selecting the brightest areas because i don't want this layer to affect those at all then i'm going to soften out my highlights here to make it a little bit softer and maybe add a little bit of blur and a little bit of denoise just to make sure that the effect is as little notable as possible. I'm gonna move this around to see where I really like it. Here is pretty good. I'm gonna turn Shift H off so I can see what I'm doing again. I'm gonna head into my primaries and I'm just gonna increase the shadows a little bit to make it look nicer. Now, I really like where the exposure is at now. There's plenty of detail and it's looking pretty good. If I'm looking at my waveform down here, I can see nothing is clipping in the blacks. It's just moving around down here. I don't want it to affect these areas up here. So what I can do is I can head into tracking go to frame and then make a keyframe here. This will be our first frame in the scene. And I'm gonna zoom out quite a little bit here. Then I'm gonna move forward into the frame. And while we are still here, I wanna lower my mask a little bit. Then I'm gonna move further in and I'm gonna move it a little bit further down as well. And then as we get to around here, where there's no more ground, I'm gonna move it completely out of frame. What's gonna happen now is as we play it through, you'll see the mask slowly go down and slowly blend through the image and lower. And if you pause it here, you can see it's still working on the bottom, but it's not affecting the top anymore because the softening is going out here. And here it's still working, but only in the bottom of the frame. And as it goes out, it goes all the way out of the frame as the camera and the drone moves forward. So that's pretty good for what we have now. We can play it out in full here as well. If you pause it here, you can see this is the effect that it has moving forward 
It has little effect here in the bottom and moving all the way through the end. Now I'm turning it on and off and you can't see any changes because nothing is happening. Now we want to turn on the highlight one. Turning that on again will remove anything else that we've done, but we're going to do kind of the same trick here. So I'm going to take my squared mask again, just to simplify things in this video. I'm going to drag it out quite a bit, but because it's so strong here, I'm actually going to drag it down a little bit as well to take full effect of the mask here. So I'm going to click Shift H. I'm also going to soften it out and drag it down quite a bit here to see where we get, probably around the middle here. And because the sun is coming from over here and we can see it shining more here, I'm going to drag my mask down on the side as well to kind of get that softening on this side too. I'm going to head into my qualifier again. With the luminance selected, I'm just going to drag up until I start losing my shadows around here. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to soften that out to make sure I'm not selecting too much. Again, adding a little bit of denoise, a little bit of blur, just to make sure we're not seeing any weird softening. And clicking that off again, now we can start working with our highlights here. So I want to drag down my offset a little bit and maybe my highlights, see where we can get things looking. This already looks a lot better, but I think we can do even better than that. So I'm just gonna turn the mask down a little bit more and see where we're getting. I don't want the light to be too soft up here. So I'm trying to balance that out by not lowering the gain too much, but working with the highlights instead, and then trying to keep the brightest point up here because the sun will be clipping as there's no information in the sun itself. And this is kind of how we can try and work around with balancing things out. I'm pretty satisfied with how it looks now. We got some detail back in the sky back here. We could probably work a little bit more here. For the example's sake, I think this is fine. Again, we're gonna go into tracking and do the same, but this time the opposite way around. So I'm gonna make a keyframe at the end. I'm gonna move this up and then move the clip up. Move this back again, move this further up. And then to the final part here, I'm just gonna move this all the way up so it's not affecting the clip at all. We need the front keyframe here that it made automatically to be up as well. So if we play it back now, we should see that a slow mass comes in. It'll slowly come down and make our selection here. And as we move back, we can see this is what the mask does. If we move back a little bit again, it only affects the top here, which is what we wanted. Here it almost doesn't affect anything, which is fine. And here it doesn't affect anything at all. So this is how you can play around with making these work. And if we turn off our shadow and highlights masks now, you can see this is what we came from before. And this is what we have now. It doesn't matter if the clip is rotating or if it's moving back and forth or what it's doing now. The only matter is if the exposure is changing. So you can play around with the masks like this, selecting the brightest and the darkest areas and then move them around with the tracking. I prefer to do it like this and not the automatic way because I just find that it works a little bit better when I can control it manually and I don't have to rely on resolve tracking things for me. So with that said, we'll catch you in the next one.